السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى عليه وأصحابه ومن ولاه اللهم زدنا علما ولا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذا حديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم افتح مسامع قلوبنا لذكرك اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعا وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابا اللهم رحمنا بالقرآن وجعله لنا إماما ونورا وهداء ورحمة اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته أنا الآلاء الليل وأطراف النهار واجعله لنا حجة يا رب العالمين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we send peace and blessings on the best of his creation our leader, our imam, our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in beneficial ilm, knowledge that brings us closer to Him, to not let our hearts swerve from the right path. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us truth as the truth and help us to follow it and show us falsehood as falsehood and help us to stay away from it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show His mercy to us through the Quran and to make the Quran an Imam, a leader for us, full of light and guidance and Rahmah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remind us through the Quran when we forget, uh, to teach us that which we are ignorant of and to bestow on us the ability to read it day and night and to make it an evidence in our favor on the day of judgment and not against us. Ameen. So the surah that we are inshallah embarking on today is called Surah Al-Waqi'ah which is the 56th surah and is made up of 96 ayats. So we'll see how much of that we can cover today. And uh, as we've been going through the Quran, we've been going through the Meccan Quran. This is also another Meccan Surah. And therefore, as we have mentioned before, short ayats, rhythmic, dealing with some main themes, Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or Risala, messengership and the messages that came through. The Day of Judgment, Jannah, Nar, the end of what's coming. So that's going to be the general theme of this. And this surah follows Surah Ar-Rahman, which we have covered a few months ago. And it sort of almost is like a continuation and it complements Surah Ar-Rahman and we will see how it does that. So there are certain special things about the surah that are mentioned in the hadith. As you know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was a youthful 63 years old when he passed away, sallallahu alayhi wa He had very few white or gray hair. In fact, they could count it like 13 or 17 or 19. And that's what the Sahaba used to sit and look and say, how many gray hair does he have? So one day, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu an, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq uh, said to Rasulullah, he said, Ya Rasulullah, you are becoming gray. He felt, you know, Rasulullah is developing white hair. So he said to Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, he said, Surah Hud, Al-Waqiyah, Al-Mursalat, Amma Yatasa'alun, and have made me gray. In another narration, he said, Surah Hud and its sisters have turned my hair gray. So what is common in these surahs is 
talking about the day of judgment and the severity of it that for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it was very burdensome it was heavy to to listen to these ayats and what it's going to be obviously his hair wouldn't be turning gray about himself his gray was turning hair because of concern for the ummah what they would go through on the day of judgment and how severe it's going to be so that's one narration about this and then there is another narration that one day during his khilafa sayyidina uthman radiallahu an the third khalifa went to visit a major companion who was an expert in the quran by the name of abdullah ibn al mas'ud through which all of the hanafi madhab comes who was in his terminal illness he was very very sick about to die so the khalifa went out of respect to visit him and he said to abdullah ibn mas'ud should we call the doctor for you he said the doctor is the one who has sent this affliction to me in other words the only one who can cure is allah and he already knows then they said should we set up a sort of a fund uh, or a wazifa for your daughters he had some daughters he said there is no need for that because i have taught them surah al waqia and i heard rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam say that whoever recites surah al waqia every night will never be afflicted by poverty and need and there's another narration of the the fifth righteous khalifa umar bin abdul aziz who was the khalifa and he was married to fatima who was the princess in all rights because from she was from that uh, they by that time they had become kings so she was a princess and they were very very wealthy and in some narration that on every birthday they used to wear her in pearls and jewels on the scale and whatever it was give it to the poor then uh, umar bin abdul aziz one day allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him tawfiq he called fatima radiyallahu you know uh, rahmatullah alayha his wife and said fatima allah has given us everything you know why don't we give everything away she said now this is a princess she says as you wish so he gave everything away everything away this is the khalifa soon after that came eid and fatima came to umar bin abdul aziz and said can i have some money to buy new clothes for the children so umar bin abdul aziz called his treasurer and said do i have any money to buy children for eid uh, uh, clothes for my children he said ya khalifa your your monthly salary has already been given there's nothing here so he said can i borrow some money this is the khalifa so the treasurer was also trained by umar bin abdul aziz he said yes you can borrow some money but do you have a guarantee on your life from allah that you will be able to pay it back so umar bin abdul aziz said leave it he said fatima tell the children to have supper no new clothes for eid this our children should know what it is like you just take it for granted when he was dying his brother in law who was born to be khalifa at some point who was very sort of corrupt lot of money changing came to him he said you know you have really made bad decisions in your life you have 11 or 12 children you are leaving them nothing can i give them some of my money he said no keep your money because your money is not pure he's telling his brother in law he said then they are going to starve he said no they are not going to starve because i taught them what sura al waqiah now our youngsters shouldn't get the idea that instead of doing any work i'm going to get rich reciting sura waqiah every night that's not what is meant by this that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put enough baraka in your life that you will not be needy number 2 the surah will give you what's called qana'a 
which means contentment with whatever you have. So you will never feel needy. Oh, I need this, I need this, I don't have this. So there is a lot of qana, and the meaning of all of this is to encourage us to read the surah every night if we can. Either memorize it or read it. If you read it every night, guess what's going to happen in a few months? You would have memorized it. So therefore, because of this fadail, this is one of the most frequently read surahs, surah al waqiah so the themes are in the beginning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about al-waqiyah which means the inevitable event that is the day of judgment and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the division of people into three groups remember he said it's complementary to surah rahman how many groups were there in surah rahman if you remember three is a guess what were the three groups In Surah Rahman, there were two grades, two grades in Jannah. Remember the higher grade and the second grade, and one of Jannah. That's what was mentioned. Three grades. So same three grades are mentioned here. So three groups of people Allah will talk about, and He talks about the recompense, the jaza, what they are given. Each group is going to talk about their levels. And then that after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about his power and his creativity and the signs in his creation to make people understand who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because the main focus is that people are denying al-waqiyah, that this event is going to happen, that there is going to be a day of judgment, there is going to be resurrection, Allah will raise everybody up. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about his creative power and therefore his ability to recreate and resurrect everybody for the Qiyamah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about briefly about the Quran itself, the revelation of the Quran, which is also what they were denying. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the end talks about death and the destination and destination of the three groups that were mentioned earlier. The three groups are two groups of believers, Sabiqun, the forerunners. You know, the people who are ahead of everybody. Then the average believer and then the disbeliever. So people of the right, people of the left and as upon as upon. So whenever we read the Quran, we, there should be some, it should be interactive. Our hearts should respond and interact with these ayats. When we are told, told about these groups, it's not for the purpose, oh, okay, there are going to be three groups, so I will check off, you know, there are three groups, one this, one this. No. The question is, where do I want to be? That's the whole purpose of it. What characteristics do I have? Where, where do I fit in my life right now? So we need to interact with the Quran, reading it, understanding it, and then applying what we read. You know, it has to come. It's not enough to just accumulate knowledge. So now we start with this introduction. In the beginning, the first six ayat which talk about this event that al-waqiyah that is going to occur which is essentially the destruction of the earth and then the resurrection when Allah will raise everyone a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim idha waqa'atil waqi'ah laysa li waqa'atiha kadhiba خافضة الرافعة إذا رجت الأرض رجا وبست الجبال بسا فكانت هباء منبثا. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إذا وقعت الواقع وقع means something that falls, that happens, that happens quickly and suddenly. Ida waqa'at al waqia. Al waqia is the event, which is the day of judgment, the destruction of this planet and the universe and the whole system that Allah has created. That is the waqia. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ida waqa'at al. When that event happens, when that thing drops, you know, when it happens, it happens suddenly and it also implies that it is. This is mentioned as waqa'at, 
means in the past tense, as if it has already happened. Because what is implied when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses past tense for future events means it is certain that it is going to happen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that this is an event that will definitely happen as if it has already happened and it is irreversible. It's not something like, okay, it was going to happen, but it got deflected. You know, there's a hurricane coming, but it took a turn towards the Atlantic. It's not like this is going to happen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, now when you use the word idha waqa'atil, this idha is used before something terrible that's going to happen. It's like saying, when that event happens, when. So it puts scare in, that's one way. Another way is if you read the two ayats together, idha waqa'atil waqiya, laysa li waqa'atiha kadiba. Then it means when that event happens, nobody will be, then it becomes an adverb. When that happens, nobody will be able to deny it. There will be no denying it. So that's another way of reading. Now there's a third way of reading. If suppose you read it continuous from Surah Ar-Rahman, because that ends with that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you this reward and that reward and that's, all of that's going to happen. And the next ayah is, إِذَا وَقَاتِلْ That means all of that will happen when this event occurs. Okay, so there are different ways of looking at it, but it all brings us back to the same thing that this great event is going to happen. Now, some of our scholars, Ibn Ajiba and others, who are very spiritually oriented, they look at it in a different way. This is the general understanding. They said, he said, that this can also mean that when that spiritual awakening happens to you, that event, then all of what comes through, everything changes. Okay, that's just another ishara in it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Laysa kadiba, That no one will be able to deny it because it's happened. Okay. And this is especially for those because while this was being revealed in Makkah, people were denying this is not going to happen. They were making jokes that, you know, how can it be that we become dust and bones? How will we come back? How is everybody going to come back? How is the system? You're saying the skies will go and the sun will go and oceans will go and mountains will How is this not going to happen? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, all those who deny will never be able to deny it when they see it. Khafidatul rafia. Khafad means to bring down. Rafa means to raise up. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, this event will lower and it will raise. And then he doesn't describe what is being lowered and what is being raised. Means this is an open, anything you can apply to that. So the common way to understand, what most people understand is that some people, the status of some people will be brought down. For example, somebody was very big and connected and, uh, you know, powerful and rich and everything else. On that day, this person might be brought way down. Whereas someone in this dunya, nobody knew them. They were considered nothing. Yet with Allah, their status was such that now they are brought up. So one understanding of that it will bring some down and raise up is, according to the status of the person with Allah, someone could be brought down. There's a hadith of the Prophet wasallam about a big man. Big man, both physically big, weighed heavy, and had a lot of power and thing. He said on the day of judgment, he will not be worth the wing of a mosquito. The same thing. Because the worth in the dunya, by dunya standards, is very different than the worth of with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, there's another hadith that a person who nobody pays attention to, he has nothing. But when he raises his hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not allow what he is asked to not happen. So there are people like that. Now, what else can you, what can else, what, because it's open, what else can be? So people will be elevated to Jannah, ranks in Jannah, and they will be lowered into the depths of Jahannam, raising and lowering. Similarly, we have scales on the day of Jannah. Somebody's scale will be raised, somebody's scale will be lowered. Similarly, things that are high, skies gone, lowered. Stars, moon, all of that. Mountains high, gone down. Things lowered. What are under the ground that will be raised up? What is that? 
most important, the people who are going to undergo hisab. They were low, now you are raised up, raised up for hisab. So all of those things can happen because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will recalibrate the whole system according to the truth, not how the worldly powers were. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again talking about the destruction, he says, Ida rujjatil ardu rajja. Rujja means it will be sh the earth will be shaken so violently through its whole depth. You know, right now when you have the worst earthquake, it's a few tectonic plates on the surface of the earth. They move a little bit and the whole thing falls apart. You know, 9, 8, 7.5 Richter stick. And it's localized. This earthquake is like no other. Because إِذَا زُلْزَلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَ شَيْءٌ عَظِيمٌ Allah SWT The whole earth will be shaken and leveled. رُجَّةِ الْأَرْضُ رَجَّةِ Shaken so violently. The entire earth and through its whole depth. And then what we look at today and what we consider the most, the strongest things, mountains. Nothing can move the mountains. You know, you need a lot of dynamite to blow off this there. And there are mountains and mountains and mountains. You look at everywhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa bussa til jibalu bassa. Bussa, bassa means to be ground into small particles. Things that seem so formidable, so strong, will become without any form. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grind them with this shaking. So they will come down, they will collapse. فَكَانَتْ هَبَاءً مُنْبَثَّ And they will become haba. Haba is if you're sitting in a room where the Abdullah ibn Abbas said where the sun, sun rays come through, you see the sun rays coming through and you see some particles floating in there, that's haba. What's the worth of that? Can you collect that? No. Mountains will become like that. Think of it, if you've ever been in a desert or a dusty place, India, Pakistan, and somewhere in the north, these windstorm comes, there's dust everywhere, and then when it stops, it's gone. The mountains will be like that dust, and when it stops, there's no mountain left. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that this is what's going to happen. This is the destruction, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the three groups that will emerge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have the angels organize things into three groups. As we said, those were mentioned also in Surah Ar-Rahman. وَكُنْتُمْ أَزْوَاجًا ثلاثة. And you will be, you human beings will be azwaj. We know zawj as here, what is meant by azwaj is groups of people, not just couples. Okay. Thalatha, three groups of people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for ashabul maymanati ma ashabul may. Maymana means people on the right. Okay. Then he says, Ma ashabul maymana, it is in wonder. How wonderful, how noble, how lucky, or how fortunate, and how blessed are the people of the right hand. People of the right hand, what does that mean? In in our culture, the right hand always stands for something good and left for the opposite. Similarly, on the day of judgment, the people, Allah's arsh, and again we are making it like this, we don't know any idea of the arsh. On the, on the right of the arsh will be people of the right hand. On the left of the arsh will be people on the left hand, and they will be grouped right in front, the sabiqun. Similarly, we also know that on that day, books will be given. Books will be given in the right hand for the people who are on the right. And books will be given on the left hand or behind the backs for the people on the left because those who are failure. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ashabul Maymana, people of the Yameen, of the right. These are the people who were righteous. They will be there. Their, their hand, their books will be given in the right hands. Essentially, these are the main residents of Jannah. Okay, we'll come to the Sabiqun, which are in the elite. Okay. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَصْحَابُ الْمَشْمَةِ مَا أَصْحَابُ الْمَشْمَةِ And the people of Mash'ama on the, of the left and how wretched and how unfortunate are the people of the left hand because most of these are disbelievers and they're going to Jahannam. And if you remember from the hadith of Rasulullah in his journey of Mi'raj, he saw a man sitting 
with a lot of people on one side and a lot of people on one side. When he looked on his right, he would smile and laugh. When he looked on his left, he would cry. And he said, Ya Jibreel, who is this? He said, this is your father, Adam alayhi salam. And the people on the right are those souls who are saved, who are going to go to Jannah. So he is happy to see them. And on the left are his children who are going to go to Jahannam. So these are the groups. Wasabiquna sabiqun. Musabaqa means to compete. Race. Asabiqun, those who go ahead. You guys race? Who runs in a race wanting to come in last? Nobody. Any normal person in any competition wants to be ahead. Now this is the real competition. Asabiqun. People who moved ahead of the rest. You know, the front pack, the forerunners. Now, as-sabiqoon, was-sabiqoon, as-sabiqoon. Allah SWT just repeats the word. The subject and predicate is the same. In, in Arabic, they say, muqtada and khabar, same word. To tell us the importance of these people. Sabiqoon, they are the sabiqoon. Okay, so Allah SWT stresses their status by doing this. Because they were first in the race. They put the Akhara in front. They put Allah's orders in front. They competed to be first in every good deed. When there was a charitable event, they wanted to be the first. When there was some, you know, ibadah, they had to be the first. When something good needed to be done, you know, the town needed to be cleaned, they were the first. When, you know, masjid needed something, they were the first. In every good deed, they were ahead. So, sabiqoon as sabiqoon, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ula'ika al muqarrabun. These are the ones who are brought, brought near. Brought near to who? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, they are brought right in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know. So, when you go to a, you know, a game or you go to a uh, play, the first row, who sits there? That's the most expensive, the special people who can. Here Allah SWT is giving special priority to the Sabiqun. You will be right in front of me. People on the right, Alhamdulillah. That's where majority of us are going to be. But we always, it's not enough for us to say, oh yes, there'll be Sabiqun, but I'm not. No, I want to be in them. And of course, may Allah protect us from being the people of the uh, Mash'ama. Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, Fi jannatin na'in. They are in gardens of eternal pleasure. Na'im. Of blessings that never end, that cannot be imagined. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Thullatum min al awwaleen wa qaleelum min al akhir. So the people who are in the, the sabiqoon, the, the elite, the forerunners, he said, Thullatum. There is a large group. From the first. And a few from the latter ones. Now what does that mean? So some of the scholars have said this means the previous nations. They were the first nations. We are the last. There were a lot from, lot from them and few from us. But the majority said that's not so. Because the Prophet ﷺ described essentially of the 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 rows of people going to Jannah, 75% of them are going to be from my ummah. So it cannot be Khalil. But so some have said that this means that the early generation of Muslims, there were a lot from them, from the Sahaba and the Tabi'in. And from later generations, there's still some. Again, to tell us, it didn't say there's nobody from later generations. If you're not from the Sahaba or Tabi'in, you cannot be from. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Because the Prophet ﷺ also told us, he told his Sahaba that you are, he said, he, my generation is the best generation, then the generation after that. Now think of all the, we are 36 generations later, I mean, so much lower. But what did he say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He told his Sahaba, if you were to leave one-tenth of the commandments of Allah, one-tenth, 10%, 10 you will go astray. And there will come a time when the people of this ummah who follow one-tenth of the commandments, they will be successful. Because it is so much harder. 
We are not with the Prophet ﷺ. We are not with those early generations. We have so far removed and the temptations and tests and trials keep getting bigger. So don't get discouraged that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to put us in later generations. <coughs> now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to describe the rewards of the sabiqun. Ala sururim ma'duna. They are now just he gives us a picture and again these are pictures they may not be, be pictures only what we can identify so when he talks about surur you know it's it's a bed it's a couch it's a throne but what are we think of couches like this and beds like we have and thrones like we have we don't know the, the ones in jannah okay this is just a name ala sururim ma'duna ma'duna means that that they are woven with precious stones and so special things that they will be sitting on they are sort of reclining you know just relaxing on these special things that Allah has created he's talking about your furniture of Jannah and mutaqabilin they're sitting facing each other and obviously they'll be talking to people and they will only be with other you know people who are as -sabiqun. you know you're not going to have any losers out there because that's what Allah SWT has has put so this he's telling us the furniture in brief yatufu alayhim wildanum mukhalladun yatufu those who have just come back from from uh, umrah should know the word yatufu from tawaf yatufu so going around them would be wildanum young boys Mukhalladun who are eternal. What they would they be going around doing what? Serving them. So some of the Mufassirun have said that these young boys would be the children who died before the age of accountability. So Allah will give them that form. Okay. Whether they're children of Muslims, whether they're children of non-Muslim, because of their innocence, Allah will give them that. And they will come around just like uh, to do that. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the drinks. He said with cups and you know jugs that pour and with uh, what we call chalices that don't have handles. With overflowing with the drinks of Jannah. Mimma'in. The paradisial drinks that are just overflowing. Okay. Then he describes the characteristics of these drinks. La yusadda'una anha wa la yunsifun. These are drinks because sometimes it's translated as wine. That they will not stupefy you. They will not intoxicate you. And they will not uh, give you a headache. Hangover. None of you know this but what we read for people who drink the next day they have a headache you know they, they feel hungover they don't feel right uh, so that intoxication ends badly if they haven't gotten into an accident or something else so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying all of that is for them why because they restrained themselves from those things in this dunya they stayed away Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now I will give you drinks that are better than those And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the cuisine. What will would they be eating? He says, وَفَاكِهَةٍ مِمَّا يَتَخَيَّرُونَ Fakiha means fruits. And fruits of Jannah, as in Surah Rahman we said, everything in pairs and some Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. And as we remember, you know, pomegranates, you know, things like that and all the other fruits. These are just names. They are not, there will be some similarity, but they will be very different in Jannah. Wafakiyata mimma yatakhayyarun means they will be given ikhtiyar to choose whatever they want. So it's not like, you know, this is only this is available, this is available, this is not in them. Anything, any fruit you want, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there will be choices and choices and choices of fruits that will resemble and there will be others that are exclusive to Jannah. So some scholars have said that if you want to be a good host of people like that in Jannah, when you serve them, you first serve them fruit. Because Allah mentions fruit first. 
And then he says, وَلَّحْمِ طَيْرٍ مِمَّا يَشْتَعُونَ And then the meat, the flesh of birds, whether they are chicken, whether they are partridge, whether they are ducks, whether they are whatever of, of birds, mimma yashtahun, whatever they ishtiha, whatever they desire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the meats after, he mentions the fruit first. So this is just for your information. Now, what is going to happen if you eat so much in Jannah? Are there any bathroom facilities, ladies' rooms in Jannah? No. No? Then what? Because the system that Allah has created does not produce any waste or excrement. So all the food, first of all, the food will not make you full and sick and lazy. You will not feel bloated. And to digest all the food, just a little burp, with fragrance will come out, all the foods digested. No, no other product. In this dunya Allah has created, what you eat comes out in a bad form. Over there, nothing. You drink, you don't need to go. You don't have to hold your bladder. Nothing like that. It's gone. This is how Allah creates the people of Jannah. So we've talked about how they're sitting, how they're chit-chatting with each other, how, what they're drinking, what they're eating. And now companionship. The word hur translated frequently as what? Virgins. Well, that's not what hur means. Okay, with that virgin part will come separately. Hur from hawra or huriya, which means something that is very bright, beautiful, and light in color. So essentially, Allah is describing a complexion. And ain is the plural of aina. Aina means large, beautiful eyes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, they will be creatures, your companions will be creatures with a beautiful complexion and large, beautiful eyes. So he's only talking about facial beauty. Allah has not described the rest of it, just the facial beauty. So essentially, Allah talks about, then he will talk a little bit, but again, Everything in Jannah is beautiful. What you have, what you eat, what you, and your companions are beautiful. The example of these creatures that Allah has created, and Allah has created them in Jannah. They were not from here that went there. Yes, our spouses who were here will be beautified and will, will go into, but this is a separate creation, just like those wildan mukhalladun. So, Amthal, that the example of this is like Lu'lu. Lu'lu means a pearl. And those who know where pearls are, do you know how pearls are formed? They're in a shell that's closed. You have to crack it open to take the pearl out. Which means nobody has seen the pearl. Nobody has touched the pearl. It has been secure till the person who opens it. That's what that virgin means. Means no untouched by anybody, other than the one who it was, or this creature was meant for. Okay. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has used the feminine gender, gender for them. Hmm? So that's what that jaza. Now all of this why jaza am bima kanu yamalun. This is not just, this is yes, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Based on what? This is jaza. Jaza means, like we say, jazakallah means, may Allah compensate. This is the recompense. This is what is given in exchange for, for what you used to do. Ya amalun. What they used to do. The amal they did. In exchange for that, Allah is giving them this. Okay. So, the people, the sasabiqun, their goals, their actions, their life, was led in a way that Akhra was always in front of them. So who are these people? Some said these are the Ambiya, but that's not, yes, the Ambiya have a, the, the highest status. But then you have the Siddiqun, you have the Shuhada, you have the Awliya Allah, all of these, so these are all people, martyrs, they are from those people and others who don't fit, but who led their lives in a way to make that as their main Goal in life. Okay. 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, again, continuing on their, their experience, لا يسمعون فيها لغوان ولا تأثيما. Now, the conversations, they will not hear any lagu. Lagu means something, speech that is not beneficial or that harms or that's wasteful or uh, sinful speech, you know, gossip. She said, he said, this said, they did this, all of that. Uh, backbiting, bad language, foul language, curse words, or nothing like that will be. No taunting, like today people, you know, they can say this is freedom of speech, I'll say whatever I want. And they insult you, they do. nothing, they will experience nothing like that. So why is that? Because they protected themselves from something like that in the dunya. These people did not participate in that. Neither themselves, nor they listen to people. So if somebody wants to backbite and you say, I don't want to hear it, what happens? The backbiting stops. That guy cannot talk to anyone else. What encourages backbiting is you're listening. So I didn't say anything, but just you're listening. So what should be the attitude for our youngsters and for our adults when somebody says something that you said this sounds like backbiting you should please stop i don't want to hear this that's it that's what so no i want to tell you okay okay then i'm leaving allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says leave because otherwise you are considered an equal partner even though you didn't say anything because you've encouraged it so these are people who protected themselves in the dunya from their tongue as if you remember we've talked about it before that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told one of the major companions muad bin jabal one of the major companions who we sent as a governor uh, to to yemen one time he he, he said to rasulullah rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him he actually held his tongue like this he said kuffa alayka hada protect this Check this. Stop it. He says, Ya Rasulullah, will we be held accountable for what we say? He said, may your mother lose you in our, that's one way of saying. Is there anything else that will get more people put into Jahannam on the dragged on their faces into Jahannam than the produce of the tongue? The tongue is the one that produces more sins than any other part of the body. That's why Allah SWT has given us two locks. Lips, teeth. And still it's out of control. So, the Prophet Sallallahu he used to be silent for long periods. That's the best way of protecting. So, we, what we learn from this is if we want to be in that group, we need to protect our tongues. We do not. وَلَا تَأْثِيمَ Ithm means sin, sinful speech. Either in itself it's sinful, or it encourages people to do sinful things. Okay. And for our youngsters, now the culture is that every second word is a curse word. If you listen to music, the lyrics, every single word is a bad four-letter word. Okay. This is not what Muslims, we do not listen to that. Listening to that is also forbidden. And we don't talk like that just to look like the rest of the people okay so we should be very careful about our mouths because today the mouths of people have become worse than toilets young muslims you can hear them why are they though mouths worse than toilets sisters why are they worse than toilets any idea you can flush the toilet. You can flush the toilet, but these moths you cannot stop. Okay. So what will be said to them? They won't hear any of those. No sinful speech. You know, no lagu. What they will hear? Illa qilan salaman salama. They will only hear. What does mean salam and salama? There's no conversation except assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam. Assalamu alaikum wa No. What does salam mean? Everything that gives you peace, that is protected, that's not harmful. That's salam. 
So only beautiful things will be said. Things that make you feel good will be said. Nothing disgusting. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the next ayah 27 to 40. He talks about the next grade of believers. The ashabul maymana or ashabul yameen means the same thing. Wa ashabul yameeni ma ashabul yameen. People of the right hand, as we talked about, these are the believers. And he says, Ma ashabul yameen, it's, it's just to stress the importance that how fortunate or how blessed are the people of the right. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us elsewhere in the Quran that these are believers, that believers are of three different categories. Okay. Because not everyone is going to be. Ali ibn Abi Talib or Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. You know, some of us are sinners. Most of us are sinners. We are weak. Sometimes we are good. Sometimes we are not so good. So we are, it's a mixed bag. We are, but yet we are believers, right? We make mistakes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in Surah Fatir. He says, ثُمَّ الْكِتَابَ الَّذِينَ اسْتَفَيْنَا مِنْ عِبَادِنَا فَمِنْهُمْ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ وَمِنْهُمْ مُقْتَسِدٌ وَمِنْهُمْ سَابِقٌ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَضْلُ الْكَبِيرُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Then we gave the book, the Qur'an, as an inheritance to those who istafayna, who we chose. So the believers are not saying, Okay, I, I am a Muslim. No, Allah chose you to be a Muslim. Allah is the one who gave you that hidayah. مِنْ عِبَادِنَا From my servants. He says, فَمِنْهُمْ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِ Among them, among the believers, those who do dhulm on themselves. Who does dhulm on themselves? By committing sins. So believers can commit sins, yet they are still believers. Okay. وَمِنْهُمْ مُقْتَصِدْ Who are in between, most of them, they do, you know, all the faraid, this, stay away from the major sins. They are, you know, like an average good believer. وَمِنْهُمْ سَابِقُ الْبَيْقْ And those who race and compete with each other in good deeds. This is the sabiqun. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that there are these three categories. And that's what we have here. The second category. So this second category, Ashabul Yameen, will include those who have done dhulm against themselves, Muslims who make mistakes, who sin. And those who do mostly good. But they're not the sabiqun, which we've already talked about. So, in this would be those who are dhalim le nafsihi by sinning, who do dhulm on their nafs, the muqtasid, who are sort of average good Muslims. You know? Average good Muslim today, who is an average good Muslim, you know, by our standards, oh, mashallah, he is like a wali. No, he's not a wali, he's like a very ordinary person. Okay? Because our standards are big. Anybody who knows a little bit of Quran, a Quran oh, he's hafiz. No, he's not hafiz. Oh, he's an alim. He went seven years in school. You go seven years in school, what do you come out with? Seventh grade, how much do you know? Nothing. Alim. Because we become so... Anybody who gives a lecture, he's a scholar. No, he's not a scholar. He's a student. Our standards have become so low. Okay? So, we shouldn't be elevated. MashaAllah, you did Hajj. Hajj. They give title, Al-Hajj. This is the far basic. Basic. Right? So we should be a little careful with these things, that the grades that we give are sort of uh, not proper. So about this group of believers, Fi Sidrim Mahdud. They are among gardens that have this tree of Sidr. Now, again, the name of Sidr is common here because in Western Arabia you have these trees that are called trees of Sidr. In fact, Sidr is used in the water to give it a sweet aroma when we wash the dead bodies. And the Sidr that are in Arabia have a lot of thorns. So one Bedouin came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah has put things in Jannah which will cause harm. He said, what, what is it? He said, he's put Sidr. Then Rasulullah said, Fi Sidrim Mahdud. He has put Sidr. Mahdud means whose thorns have been removed and have been replaced by fruits and beautiful flowers with sweet aroma. So the name is the same but and resembles but it's so they'll be among in the, in the English translation they call them lot trees. 
I never know what a load tree is, but if you want a name, it's a load tree. So, this is the image. Wa talhim mandud. Talh, some of the scholars have said, are plants with big leaves. Do you know plants with big leaves? Anybody? Bananas, Bananas and plantains. Now, what do the Arabs know? Because there's nothing like that that grows there. In the des deserts or in the in the Hejaz, they don't know bananas. Then why this example? Because no, because they are trees like that grow in Yemen. So they knew about these things. Okay, by the way, Yemen, you sound anything like Yamin? Yemen, remember the right? Yamin and Shemal? Everything to the right of Mecca. That's how the name Yemen came. Is all of that was Yemen. And everything above and to the left of Mecca is from Shamal, Sham. Okay, that's how those names came. So they knew about this and they said, so there'll be leaves. Again, they're not saying they're banana trees. They're something that looks like that. Uh, Mandod means they are very tightly packed with, with, with fruit, with different types of uh, things that, you know, any kinds of food. And what else? Well, Villim Mamdud. Vil means shades. Now, what does a shade mean? So if you were in the, in the picnic on, on uh, when was Saturday at ISWM, everybody was looking for the shade. Why? Because it gives you a nice, comfortable place. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has put shades in there for the purposes for regulation of how much light you want so that I don't get too burnt and I don't get too hot. In Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created shade, shades. So there is shade. Now the shade can be shade of a tree. But in this experience of the dunya, anything that any shade comes from an object. If there's no object, there's no shade. The clouds have to come to bring a shade, right? A tree has a shade, the house has a shade. Over there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can create shade without any object. Okay. But there is also shades of the tree because it's mentioned in the Prophet Wasallam's hadith. He said, in Jannah there is a tree. And if you have a fast Arabian horse that races a person, rider riding it fast, non-stop, for a hundred years will not cross the shade of the tree. Just to give you an idea of space and time. So there is shade. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that they'll be sitting. And shade also means ease, comfort, security. Wama'im maskub. Ma, water that's poured of Jannah. That is maskub, that is gushing, that is flowing. And over there, the laws of surface tension don't apply. So it's not like water. Water is going to be running like this. There are no tracks. You know, there's no passages in which water has to go down and water can be running up like this. Can you imagine water going like this? It doesn't because we have surface tension which makes it like this. But over there, and it will be going anywhere. And the beauty of it is if you're sitting there and it's going there and you wish that it turned that way, it will turn that way. Okay. And we know four different sort of rivers of Jannah have been mentioned. What are they made of? Milk, honey, 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 honey water, water. Uh, not don't say alcohol. <laughs> we it's translated as wine. It's translated as wine, but one that la yunzefun doesn't give you a headache, hangover, or intoxicant. Mufakihatin kathira. Fakiha, same fruits, kathira. Unlimited, not like in this life. La maktuatim wa la mamnua. No, they are not something that can maktu that stop. So okay, I want to have mango. Mango season is over, finished. There is no season. Any time you want, as much as you want. Wa la mamnua. It is not forbidden for you, like it was for Adam alayhi salam. In this dunya also, you know, you so say I've got diabetes, I can't eat so much mango. No problem. Eat as much as you want. So you will not be limited. Oh, I can't afford this fruit because they're charging. So no. 
There's no financial restriction. There's no physical limitation. There is no health limitation. Eat. Enjoy. Allah is the host. وَفُرُشِمْ مَرْفُوعًا Again, those raised couches, furush, marfu'a, elevated with their companions. Again, it was mentioned, hurun ain. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not used the word, but same implication, because he goes on to say, inna ansha'na hunna insha'a. We have created them, hunna, again, female gender, perfectly, insha'a as Allah wanted, a new creation. Again, talking about those companions that we mentioned before as Hur and Ain, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a creation that is very special. فَجَعَلْنَا هُنَّ أَبْكَارَ And we have made them abkara, untouched. That's where the word virgin comes in. Okay. And the word virgin is not restricted to women because a man can be a virgin, he's untouched. And a woman can be a virgin, so don't take it in that. Means pure. Uruban atraba. Uruban means full of love, exclusive love for their spouse that Allah has paired them with. Atraba, same, equal in age, which is about 33 years, prime of age, never getting older, never aging, never sagging. Face doesn't droop, the, you know, no wrinkles, no nothing, no Botox. no Botox. Use all the Botox here if you want. But if you don't use Botox here, then Allah will give you better. They say, you were happy with what I gave you? Okay. But if you use it, you can, you can get a fatwa on that from people. I'm not giving you that fatwa. فَجَعَلْنَا هُنَّ أَبْكَارًا أُرُبًا أَتْرَابًا لِأَصْحَابِ الْيَمِينَ For the people of the right, the Ashab al Yameen. Thullatum min al Awwalin, a large group from the early. Wa Thullatum min al Akhirin, a large group from the latter, people who come after. So that's where the majority of us look like we are going to fit. But our goal should be, inshallah, if we are there, alhamdulillah, these are all people of Jannah. But we shouldn't be satisfied with, okay, I've entered the lowest level, I'm good, good to go. Yes, you're good to go, but yeah, when you see people above, then, you know. So let us all, what is meant by this, Allah SWT is describing this. He didn't have to describe the sabiqun to encourage us positively. You know, there is a higher grade, there is a higher grade. You know, you want an A+, plus. you know, you want... More than 4.0 average, you have some extra. We strive for this, that's where we need okay, extra credits with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now comes the other group. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that of disbelievers. Wa ashabu shimali ma ashabu shimal. The people of the left. And what how wretched are the people of the left? Fi samu mu wa hamim. Samum means hot winds i mean we experience hot winds in some countries you know when the temperature is 120 degrees 130 degrees even 140 degrees and you see that i remember when i used to take my bicycle going to medical school in the month of june you came out of your house it was like you somebody slapped you in the face the the wind was so hot they give you an idea that look what's ahead so prepare for it so samum is that hot fiercely hot wind that just burn the wind burns Wahameem. And when you have that heat, what do you like? Water. Cold water. Not just water, cold water. But you have hameem. Boiling water. Boiling, scorching water. You want coolness from this wind? You drink, it will burn you inside. Wadhillim min yahmoom. Wadhill, again, shade. But shade of what? Shadow of what? Black smoke. Yahmoom. Can you imagine? Even the air is polluted with smoke black. Hot winds, black smoke, because that's what's burning. And what's the fuel of Jahannam? What's making all this come out? That black smoke is coming from what? Stones and humans and jinns that are burning. That This is what is coming. And they don't finish. La baridiyun wala kareem. Nothing cold. 
nothing that will refresh or soothing them. In Nahum, now the characteristics, why are they in this situation? Does Allah like to punish his ibad? No, he doesn't. But he has his justice. In Nahum kanu qabla dhalika mutrafeen. Because indeed, these are those who before they used to indulge in every kind of luxury and pursuit of their pleasures, regardless of what Allah said. They were too much into this enjoyment of the dunya. Halal, haram, doesn't matter. This is what they used to do. So we have to be very careful. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this universe for us. Yes, you can enjoy it within the limits. And the limits of Allah let you enjoy only good things. All the things he has forbidden are things that are harmful for you. And you look at these people who are enjoying. They're enjoying what they call enjoying is always something haram and they suffer the consequences of it. Whether it's broken families, whether it's suicides, whether it's drugs, whatever it is, they're enjoying. Okay. So that's the characteristics of those people. And there are people who used to persist in the greatest of sins. The greatest of sin, of course, is shirk. Then you have major sins like murder, you know, like stealing, backbiting, cheating, riba, all of those things that they used to yusurruna, they used to persist and they used to be in there, into that, just to go ahead in the dunya in their way. This is the characteristic of the people of Jahannam. And when they were reminded, what did they do? Like the Quraysh, they used to say, when they were reminded that this is coming, live within the limits of Allah, they used to say, when we die and we become dust, Turaban and Awaman, bones, will we be, inna lama buuthun, will we be resurrected again? We and Aba'un al awwalim our forefathers that have gone before us. In other words, they denied that this would ever going to happen. So they said, this is our life, let's enjoy it. You, know, you only live once, let's enjoy. Okay? So, this is what happens. This is the characteristic. So, when this is a question they ask, will we be raised again? Can this happen? And they were not really looking for the answer. This was just to ridicule, to make fun. Okay? They didn't believe it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to those questions. Qul, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them what? Certainly, the first and the last, you will be resurrected. You will surely be gathered. You know, Miqat, when we go, Miqat, the appointed place, a meeting place, on a known day, yes, you will be resurrected. You, you think it's not going to? Yes, you will. And then what will happen? Then you who were who were dalun, the, the misguided, mukaddibun who denied, who said no, this is not going to happen, who denied the truth. You will you will eat. You will certainly eat from the tree of zakum, and the tree of zakum grows from the pit of Jahannam. And it's a special tree which survives all that fire. And it produces fruit. Fruit. But what are the fruit like? They're shaped like the heads of shayateen. And they're like grenades. Because first of all, they're full of th thorns. And they will eat it because there is nothing else to eat. And Allah will turn up the hunger that in spite of this. And they're full of thorns. Can you imagine? You can see... Thorns take out, you still eat it. So it tears you inside, and when it goes inside, it explodes. So everything pops out. And then repair, start again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You will eat from the tree of zakum. It's not like, oh, oh, I'm not going to bother with that. Yes, you will, because there's nothing else for those people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Not only will you eat, with it, you will fill your stomachs. Because that's the only thing. 
and the more and this is all it's going to be doing i mean today we get a little bit of stomach ache you know how uncomfortable will you become you know running to the hospital there's no hospital there there's no ambulance that's going to come you know there's no gastroenterologist who's going to come and take care of this buton that is filled with zakum okay then what will you do that's your food zakum not yours the people disbelievers fasharibuna alayhi min al hamim and then on top of you will drink because we are used to drinking after we eat hamim same boiling scorching water that will boil which will burn you inside fasharibuna shurbal him so no we are not going to drink that boiling water allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying fasharibuna you will drink shurbal him like thirsty camels drink that's what you will do still and the other drinks of course we know you know boil pus and you know all of that stinking stuff that's there fasharibuna shurbal him hada nuzulahum yawmaddin this is the welcome this is the entertainment on that day for the disbelievers so this is this section since it's been an hour i think we will stop here and we will complete this surah from ayah 57 to 96 which then talks about the power of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the next session instead of continuing this and we will inshallah open this up for any questions and comments and I want to hear lessons from what we have covered so far in the first 56 ayats. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu